but he's here now. He's here. Help me welcome David Duford. Hey. Thank you, Cody. Arturo, thank you very much. So there's two different ways we can go through today. So as, to as far as topics go, I'm, I'm an open book. That's kind of what I came up here. That's what I told Arturo. I am here to show you everything behind the scenes, under the hood. So this is number one, how my YouTube channel works. So if you're looking to create content, you're wondering where to start, you're wondering about equipment, strategies, even though what my predominant focus is is on recruiting agents, a lot of the fundamentals and principles apply to no matter what you're doing content-wise. So wherever you guys want to go, I'm completely an open book. I'll show you what videos work well, how the strategy goes, kind of the, the formula behind the videos, uh, the story behind why I got started, anywhere you want to go is fine with me. So that's number one. Number two, um, I had a big epiphany last, about a year and a half ago. I realized that there was a problem with my business, and it was me. I was the face of the business, but I realized that I couldn't do everything in my business. So I made a conscious decision. I think I told Cody, like, you know, I always wanted to make a half million a year and not have any employees, right? That was my goal. Then I realized there's some problems with that. Like you have to do everything because you don't have employees. So I began to, to put in employees, not, not agents, 1099 agents, different story, but I'm talking about staff, people to help you run the business. And um, totally recreated, reimagined the business. And just to give you some stats, and, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is from an operational standpoint, running your agency, from sales training, from picking the right candidates, um, to anything running a business when it comes to the agency, I'm happy to be open-minded and share with you all of that. So like for some examples, last year, March of uh, 2023, we did 808,000 in approved business, business, and this is mostly final expense. This year we did 1.9 million. So 235% increase year over year, all right? Uh, for example, we had 185 writers, so people writing business last year in March 2023, this year we had 199, but check this out. We had nine people in 2023 who wrote 20,000 or more. This year we had 30 people write 20,000 or more in coverage. You need to get, guys get through? Okay. Watch out for the court, yeah. You'll have to. Just look at AJ. No, it's more. Yeah, very good. So we've done, we've done a, uh, my team, excuse me, this isn't me, this is my team, right? We know how important our team is, right, Cody? Uh, has done an incredible job really taking what we had and taking it to the next level. So when it comes to what we've done to recruit talented agents, finding talented people on your team, how we've motivated, uh, uh, gotten these agents to get out there and crush it, I'm happy to go in any direction with that as well. And as far, it, it, like I said, this is an open, the last thing here is this is an open mic Q&A. Um, I don't have a prepared speech. I'm here to answer your questions. Take it in any direction you want to. Uh, and I think that's probably the best way to serve you guys. So I'm going to open this up for questions. Is it, guy in the back, what's your name? Rob. Rob. Hey, Rob, how you doing? So I'm, I'm probably the worst guy in social media here. Yeah. So if, some, if you're going to give a blueprint for somebody to start, okay, we all know now, how should that family start? Yeah, okay. So, um, I mean, the first step is I've got a guy right now that I met at Cody's event a, about two years ago, um, Ryan, Ryan Valet. I don't know if you remember him. Yep, yep. He joined my agency, but he came to that because he wanted to do YouTube videos. He's a very talented telesales agent. And the first problem with him, after we've worked together for a year and a half, guess what he hasn't done? Filmed his first freaking video, okay? So the first thing is it's like just take action. And I know that's not necessarily your, your question, and I'm going to get to it, but the biggest problem people have is being afraid of looking at the camera. Like, oh, my God, the camera's staring back at what I'm going to do. It's just a camera. Just do it. It's going to be cringe the first video you do. Just accept that fact, right? But the thing is, as you do more and more of it, just like as you guys sold insurance, you get better and better and better. You start seeing the mistakes you make. You start getting better. It's the same process here doing videos. So um, don't get too hung up on it. Just get started. Now, as, as far as a grand strategy for YouTube, the, what, what sits as the foundation of being successful on YouTube or any social media is giving away world-class helpful information that could also be entertaining, right? I have a penchant of being informative. I'm not the Mr. Beast of insurance, right? So my entertainment value is probably there marginally, 
but where I think I make the most impact, and I would likewise share with all of you, is help, educate, give people value that they never have heard or seen anywhere else. If that's your mindset, if that's your underlying um, motivation, that, is, that just is the foundation of everything. Okay? Now, taking it a little bit more tactively, tactfully, in tactics, tactics. Um, you have to hit into trends, okay? That's what I would say. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of things that have worked well for me that I intentionally do in order to garner views and, in, and to hit a cross current of maybe other people who are in our space but haven't been exposed to our content. Again, I'm going to talk a lot about recruiting agents, but think, how can I apply this if you're trying to generate leads for insurance sales? It's the same concept. So if I go here to my content, so this is the back office of YouTube. This is where we see everything. I'm going to point out, actually, I'm going to make this even better. We're going to go to analytics. We're going to go to um, the top 10 videos here. Actually, let me do this. I'll do it a little better. We'll go back about, let's go back the last year. Because now we're looking over a year. What has been performing the best over the past year? This is going to tell you some, I think, again, fundamental trends here. So what do you notice about the first six here? What do you notice? Hot takes, what do you mean? Competition. Competition. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Calling out other items. Yeah, in a respectful way. Sure. We don't want to get ceases and desists here, right? You know what I'm Never. Yeah. Never. You'll get one. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep going long enough, you'll get one. No, I don't mention that company. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> what I do here is I talk about other companies. Okay, now this, I talk about a lot of other stuff. But this is what I would consider top of the funnel content, okay? So I figured this out, I don't know how, a couple of years ago. But people don't get into the insurance business to research life insurance. They do it to research, well, is PHP legit? Is Symmetry Financial Group a scam? And so on and so forth. So I'm tapping into this large pool of people who may be selling insurance or possibly thinking about it, Right? So what I do is essentially hack their funnel because they don't know about me from anybody else until they come across these videos. And then the hope is, I hope, they're like, well, this dude's not so bad. And then YouTube will start showing my other content to them, and then they'll be exposed to final expense. A lot of people I talk to never knew about final expense until they saw my content. So that tells me they're not starting with the idea of, let me research final expense. They don't even know what that is, right? They just kind of stumble across it. So how, how can we translate this to you? Hot takes, like you said. Who, who are some financial people you could take hot takes of? Come on, please tell me. Dave Ramsey. Thank you. Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Dave Ramsey. Who else? There's probably YouTubers. Susie Orman, Susie Orman right? There, there's probably YouTubers you could take hot takes of and rea a reaction style video, right? Where their, their idea is so out of whack, you have to like straighten it out and tell the truth, right? Because people want controversy. They want to be entertained, or they want to have to watch something shocking, right? So that's kind of a strategic piece of advice that has worked really well for me. And part of what I position myself as is I'm, I try to take the middle of the road. I'm never, like, super biased uh, in one way or the other. I let people decide what they're going to uh, choose. If I'm not saying PHP is a scam. I'm like, you got to consider this, this, and this. You make your mind up. And the people who work with me appreciate that because I'm not, because they look at me as a salesperson and I'm taking a much more neutral, nothing's perfect, but a much more neutral road. Does that answer your question? Sort of, kind of? Good. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Please. Who else has questions? Two of those are recent, too. This Why year, did you decide also? to go with yeah. YouTube and are, are you on other platforms like Instagram? Yeah, I, I suck at everything but YouTube <laughs> I, because I don't consume it. I don't like TikTok. I don't like Instagram. I sure as hell don't like Facebook. Yeah. I love YouTube. YouTube's where I've been for my entire uh, 20s and 30s. So I understand the. Pl I think I think that's an intuitive understanding because I consume it. I, I mentioned it earlier. The platform you should do isn't necessarily YouTube. It's the one that you know, consume, and therefore understand the yeah. best. Okay. And the thing is, is there's opportunity like this all over the place. You just don't even know it because nobody, because everybody's like, well, I don't want to look like an idiot, you know, or 
well, I don't know, you know, people laugh at me, or haters, ugh. You know, we all get them, but who cares, right? You got you know, fortune favors the bold, as they say. Mm -hmm. So pick your platform, and I would say pick one. Don't do this spread it across and diversification, that's bullshit, okay? Pick the one that you like, the one that resonates to you, and go all in, just like your given insurance niche, just the same conceptually, okay? Uh, Arturo in the back. So, uh... A lot of the stuff comes about mindset, about how you show up on camera and being your authentic self and worrying about what people are going to think, how you look, your hair, this. You never, you, it's always to something, right? You, you, you know, you don't have enough of this or it needs to look like this. So how did you overcome? Have you seen some of these weirdos on YouTube? Yeah. I mean, these freaks? But I mean, for us, like, <laughs> people are like, oh, I don't do this, I'm not a YouTuber. Well, that's my point. I, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, guys. All right. I'm just saying, like, there, have you seen people on YouTube? I mean, there's some people out there who are just like, how do they have the confidence to show up looking like that? Okay. And that should, if you're like in some weird way, like, well, I'm not that bad looking. So maybe that's a good boost to you, right? So I'm trying to figure out a way to motivate you to get over this hang up, which is all up in your head that oh, I don't have the perfect tone or the experience or whatever, right? I failed out of final expense. I failed out of final expense, y'all, and I'm up here on YouTube lecturing people about it. It's crazy. But there's value in that too, right? But the point is, even though I failed, I still had value to deliver, right? So, you know, that's the thing. Most, most of the biggest thing is just getting started somewhere, right? I can wax poetic about the stuff and I can give you strategies, I can do all this stuff and it's useful, but if you don't just get over the fact of picking up the camera and filming yourself, nothing is going to happen. And the best part is you own that you failed and you're actually honest and vulnerable. Yeah, and people want that. People, people want that. Totally want that. Yeah, and, and, and look, that's not the only strategy. You may have the stud who writes a million a year and he's going to have an audience, right? And that's the thing. There's a ton of people to talk to. You just got to find your group of people. The guy in the back. So how do you have your staff help you build your social media presence? What, what stuff they do in the back end? Help yeah, so good question. Um, a lot of the strategy is just me. I'll talk to people sometimes, but I look at a lot of the competitions videos. I look at people outside of the insurance business for ideas and inspiration. Maybe they're in the biz op space, right? not necessarily insurance, maybe they're in solar sales, right? So I look at other niches and kind of get ideas to extract and steal from them and to kind of make my own angle. Um, as far as the editing goes, I go back and forth. There are times when I will pay an editing firm to edit the videos and to not worry about the, the input on my end. Sometimes I'll just free flow and I'll just film, shoot a video, and it's done. I don't know what's better. And in some respects, just free-flowing and putting content out there, it's not overly produced. It's more authentic, like Cody said. And there's value in that, too. I just go back and forth because sometimes I just get bored with a heavily produced or, you know, uh, just a straight shot, you know, just to keep it interesting. Because I've been doing, I've been, I don't know how many symmetry is, is it a scam videos I've done over the years. Like, i got to change it up a little bit here and there, you know. That's a follow-up to that. If yeah. you hired staff to help you on something to build this even, more, what would you have that staff do to help you 10x your content or subscribers in the next 12 months? Yeah, I mean, so for me, you know, Cody and I were talking about this. There's a couple of different routes you can go. I'm going to try to, Grant Cardone was a car sales. <clears throat> I mean, he was just sales at first, and then he worked into real estate, right? So as a, as a content producer, I think it's better to hyper niche. Okay, find your niche. Um, don't worry about sub counts or even view counts, but create really world class content for that hyper niche. The veterans benefits uh, niche, like you guys are talking about, is a perfect example of that, right? Um, find your niche, own it. And then over time, what you may find is that you bounce out of that niche or start to expand outside of it. I'm trying to think of some others. I mean, even Mr. Beast did that. He was a video gamer yep. before he became an entertainer. Yeah, well, a lot of them start with, as pranks and all this other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Also, Dan really focused on like, the retirement financial products too, which I think is a huge opportunity. <clears throat> yeah, and, and there's, and yeah, so there's, you know, so it's, it's all comes down to what do you want to be like? Where I want to be right now is right here. I don't care about being the uh, Grant Cardone, uh, 
copy, carbon, whatever, like I'm fine owning the final expense slash life insurance space because that's where my business is. This, this is not my business. This is my platform to get people to join my agency, right? That's my business. So that's what I want this to accomplish. Uh, let's do this guy. How you doing? Good, man. Um, what is your production strategy? Like, you shoot everything uh, over four hours for the whole month. Are you planning it throughout the week? How does that look? And then uh, what is your volume output? Are you putting out one video a week? Yeah. Are you putting out one every other day? <clears throat> yeah, I, so I, I will batch videos. So I'll sit down. Um, I will write down, and everybody's different here. I'll write down the bullet points of the topic that I want to talk about. I've done thousands of these, so I can just free flow. You probably are the same way. That's what you get to, but you may have to script it out, right? And you script out the video, what you want to say. You're looking at it as you're looking in the camera, you know, something like that. So I'll batch them out like that. Sometimes, like I said, strategically, I'll change the live streams because I think there's a lot more, there's a little bit more exposure with live streams, but also I think it connects with your audience a little bit more. And then that's just me talking on camera for whatever topic we're discussing, right? Uh, Content-wise, this is interesting. I, I watched a Hermosi video, and he was doing a business um, audit, and it was of an influencer. And they realized that, I guess, to get to their business goals, they could cut back on the content production, which took a lot of man hours and attention, and, and their views would still be there because most of their views came off of stuff that was in the past. So the point was... For me, I only do two, maybe two long videos a week now, maybe a couple of shorts, give or take. But I used to do, I used to do daily content yeah, for years. Daily now, and I don't regret that because get, you get better at something you do over and over and over again. I think there's absolute value in that. But you don't necessarily need to do a daily piece of content. It could be one really, I'd rather you do one really good piece of content a week or every other week than a half-ass one every other day. Good question. I mean, just in reflection, right now you've got, of course, millions of views, but if you were to talk to yourself with the knowledge you have now, that you said, okay, hey, if I'm starting today from scratch, like, what are some of those, like, foundational, like, or what I'm trying to say is any specific numbers, like you said, hey, I'm going to do one daily. Uh, yeah. You know, what are some, some real concrete, like, standards or things that you would establish to help you start Sure. Baby steps. Uh, number one would be figure out what niche you're in. Right. So I was originally, my name, my company name was Final Expense Agent Mentor. Then over the years, I got into Medicare, I got into ACA, and I got, my focus was disseminated, right? And so um, that's bad because I got away from the thing that makes us the most money, which is final expense. And so I refocused back in, right? So you got to know your niche. And you got to know who you're speaking to. It's really important that you understand that, okay? Um, number two, know what kind of videos instill interest, right? So like the, um, you know, the competitor reviews videos, like that is critical if you're going to build an agency, in my opinion, is to develop that kind of top-of-the-funnel content that will get the views in, that will then trickle down into, oh, what's final expense? Oh, what's this opportunity? Oh, I want to apply to join the big agency, right? And then three, man, put out as much as you can. I really do believe, as much as I say, and this is just demonstrating a point, I want you to put world-class content out there, guys, but look, it's going to take some time to get world-class, <laughs> you know? And part of this is just putting the time under tension, right? Rome wasn't built in a day. And don't be judgmental of yourself as much as possible about your content. It's just accept it's going to be bad. You're going to cringe. Your spouse is going to cringe, but do it anyway. You'll get better. You will. You will. You'll just get better. You'll get more intuitive about it. And it's certainly how it was with me. I don't know about Cody. <laughs> Amazing from day one. <laughs> I wish. Alex. Have you used AI video self? Have you experimented with that yet? No, no I'm not because for any negative reason. I'm just, I don't know. I, I like talking to people, yeah. and I like a relationship with them, right? You know, so, uh, I mean, I don't know much about it, so, I mean, I don't really have a comment. We've used AI to edit short-form content. 
but not anything. Not in the video, though. Okay. No, okay. but not in the video. Yeah. You yeah. can record your face and you can record you talking. And then you just tell it what to, you're like, here's what to say. And it'll like make a day to do you know, you know, for me, I mean, this, this maybe I'm old fashioned. I am almost 40. Um, th- that's the problem. The problem in this business is authenticity and trust. Yeah. And so for me, faking it like that, I mean, this is my, re- I may be wrong, I don't know. But I'm like, man, uh, I don't know. I want to be straight up and real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. So. Seems like it'd be a really good next video for you about to put out. There. Still oh, there you go. Yeah, AI's next. It's on the list. Um, that is an interesting idea. Like, can you tell what I did differently in this video compared to previous ones? Right. <laughs> I have not been able to tell in some of them. I, I, I believe it. It's crazy. Go ahead in the back. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, you're, so really you're using YouTube to recruit. Yes, this is a, this, the purpose of this. Where do, so do you, it is to recruit. I want to recruit people to sell for me. Yes. So your team is doing, you said one point nine. Last month, yes. A month, okay, which is really good. You get a team, where do you source all your leads from? Facebook. Okay. So you hate Facebook, but you sort you Paid. Use. Don't do it again. Yeah. Different. And I, and I let somebody else who actually likes Facebook and is good at it to do it. <laughs> so you, you have it, somebody that does your Facebook ads and all that stuff. Here. Mm-hmm. Got it. And you, that platform alone generates enough. How many agents do you have for 1.9? I mean, we, okay, so we did, we had 199 writers. So 200. For 1.9? Mm-hmm. So you're having, okay. 9,000-ish, 10,000, somewhere in there. I mean, yeah, that's still pretty, really, really good. So now, you don't have to answer this for a second, but what's your ultimate goal? Well, I was on Cody's podcast, and, and I, I offered a very low ball amount of 15 to 20 million to the general public, but since nobody took it up, the price has gotten higher. It's 50. Yeah. So, so integrity, if you want to give me 50 million cash up front, I will sell out today. Yeah. So go. it's essentially making that to be able to sell your book of business. And... Maybe, I don't know. Depends on the price. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, on these Facebook ads that you're running, are you running, uh, you know, generic product-based ads, or is it organic, value-based? Here's who I am. Here's who we are. I won't get into some of the creatives because I'm listening to you guys talk about the veteran stuff and like keep creatives close to the chest, right? Because other people will steal your stuff, and then then the price CPA goes up, and CPL is no good. Um, Generally speaking, we do, um, I would call them like testimonial-based videos. So we have, we hire these older people, and they go through a video as if they are like somebody who's representative of our market, and they tell how great the program is that they bought from us. This is essentially what we do. We, tr- we, we've, we have some iterations of it. There's some other variations that we do, but um, that's the idea mostly. It's not static ads. And we're not doing the whole, for $10 a month, you can get 40000 in coverage. Like, you can get cheap leads, but what we care about is CPA cost per acquisition, right? I'd, I'd rather pay 10 12 bucks a lead if our CPA is 150 or 100 than a lead that's 4 bucks and the CPA was 250 or 300 right? Go ahead, Arturo. Yeah, so to build, uh, to build your agency, by using YouTube, what's been the impact that that has had on your business and kind of walk me through a high level process of what somebody would go through to end up becoming on your team, to, to, to join your team? Yeah, I'll, I'll even show it. I mean, it is the reason I have a business, y'all. I mean, like, I mean, I would just be some random dude recruiting people and wouldn't be any different from anybody else because that would be a level playing field. But what YouTube does, and a consistent effort over years, too, by the way, it doesn't happen overnight. It can happen within a short period of time, but after 10 years of this, like people know who I am in this weird niche called final expense. And they go through the content, they become believers, not all of them, but by the time we talk to them, they're sold. I'm an order taker now when it comes to recruiting, right? I don't have to pressure anybody to join or tell them anything. Like they're convinced by what I've done or they're not. It's their decision, right? So now as far as our funnel goes, I'll show you our recruiting funnel if you guys are interested. I mean, when it comes to the videos, I used to be real bad. Like, I would never close saying, you know, if you're interested in learning more, go to the daviddufour.com. Like, I was just really bad. But I still got people who are interested. 
And so my first order of business with all of my content, even though you said in the back, is this a recruiting? It is recruiting, but it's likewise simultaneously about giving immense value. Because giving immense value to agents or your clients, they're, guess what? They're going to want to do business with you, right? It's one and the same in my opinion. So I worry about that first. Then I just invite them to come check out the website for more. And typically, what, this is our current funnel now. We essentially have a, an opportunity video. This gives them the overview of what our system is like, who's a good fit, and who isn't a good fit. We do a live Q&A call where they can join. We don't do one-on-ones anymore. We'll not do them. They have to join a group Q&A call. And then, yeah, because all their questions are exactly the same. And they may be, there may be questions they're not even asking that somebody else does that they'll get value out of. So that's just a very easy way to scale. And so we do a Q&A call for 30 minutes. Then we tell them, hey, you want to come to another one? You can. If not, uh, and you're ready to proceed, click the Apply Now button. So what we do, we actually don't recruit everybody with a pulse. Okay? That makes us, and I think in a, we call this the velvet rope approach. If you used to read Dan Kennedy and stuff, velvet rope approach. You know, like you go to the club, you, know, you can't come in, there's a velvet rope. Right? Mm-hmm. So we make people apply. This is the application. Um, I'm happy to go through this. We make them do a personality assessment. They actually do a legitimate interview with us. And then we decide if we're going to take them or not. And the reason we do that, guys, is because the culture of your agency really matters. If any of you have recruited a guy or gal that is not a good fit, it is a time suck. You will make you frustrated, and they probably won't ever sell anything. So our goal is to front end this process as much as possible to get rid of these people so they don't ever even enter our organization. I think there's a created higher perceived value by having agents go through steps to work with us. Right? So um, why do you do the... uh personality test were you looking for a particular so client? yeah great question it's not about the personality because you can't figure out a people's per- person's personality from a disc assessment mm-hmm. i mean you have to do that by talking to them but here's the thing everybody here is mentioning things uh, like accountability like i'm slacking my like i hear that a lot and that's a common issue with agents and part of that i'm not making any judgments here but i need to know if an agent's going to actually do what they're told because being able to reply or respond to a command is like the first step to a good agent. If they're going to be stubborn and obstinate and not take the training and, the, and, the, and what we're giving them, how are they going to be successful with us? And if they can't do a simple test to show their personality, even though we don't care, but if they can't just do something we tell them to do and they're going to just be lazy about it or complain, that's probably a red flag or a bad fit. So again, we are at multiple levels trying to filter out the bad agents, quote unquote, oh, it's bad agents. People aren't a good fit for us because it takes so much of your time, guys, the, the work with these people. Does that make sense? It's really good. Yeah. <clears throat> do you guys have a separate website for the client side of things? I do, but I, you know, I don't really, I, I've really neglected that because, you know, back to the focus thing, I decided, so I, my, I have a website, I get a few organic leads from it. But the problem with it is that I, I was either going to build an agency or I was going to build an SEO website. And the, and the knowledge you need to, to be competitive with, on SEO when you've got NerdWallet, Forbes, other these big companies with multi-million dollar budgets for stuff, for a small timer like me, not worth it. Um, so I took the route of going recommitting back to the agency building because that's where the money's at. That's where the opportunity long term is for myself, my family. And to help other people, we've already got the intrinsic setup, right, to help these people. So, so I've more or less neglected it. We've considered looking at it again, but again, it's like, guys, you, the more you go all, through life and in business, the more you have to say no to things, mm-hmm. you know. And I, there's a period in my time where I said yes to this, and then it distracted me, and I didn't I kind of, you know, plateaued for a while. So I'm like, blinders on, this is what we're doing, and that's it. How did you settle on the final expense niche of all the things and products you could have pursued? Like, how did you like- oh, just desperation. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm just like everybody else. Like, I never wanted to sell insurance. I had a personal training gym, went down the tubes during the Great Recession. Uh, I tried to find a real job. Nobody would hire. I started researching insurance. I came across the insurance forums, started reading about uh, final expense. It's like, this is kind of cool. It's just a salesman's job. It's not a lot of service. It's pretty simple to start. 
So I just stumbled across it and kept doing it. And I think the nice thing about final expense is there's no government interaction. It's not like, so I remember when private health insurance plans, that whole market got decimated when ACA and Obamacare started, you know? So ACA has come back and it's made it a little bit better, but there are people with six figure retirements that, you know, they would have lived on renewals that got wiped out. And then you see kind of the same talkings with Medicare, at least on the FMO side. So there's always kind of like the government's hand and stuff. So final expense doesn't have that. And I think when you look at the, the socioeconomics of baby boomers retiring, that's not slowing down. And people are retiring with less money than they thought they did, which means there'll be more highly candidates for final expense. So I, I got lucky. You know, I just so happened to sell it, know it, was in early enough to see and then be aware of it, and then just hopefully have the brains enough to commit to it long term. Questions? Do you, I hadn't seen your channel in a while. Do you ever put any personal stuff other than your? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, it's funny you said that. Like, I, I started doing this as a test. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I don't know. I, I, I don't really have some sort of metric to test how well it works, but I started putting up, like, down here. Don't judge me. And fun videos. Yeah, like, you know, I'm launching the Porsche with the girls and. I'm killing some bees. Stupid crap. You know, I've got these like crazy voicemails that people want to kill me that I turned into rap. Gosh. It's pretty funny. So, you know, I tried, you do want to put some personal, I, you don't want to be too like stoic and impersonal. I, tr I try to put up some stuff that's funny. I don't know if it is or not. It might be completely cringe, but. So it humanizes you. That's the idea. Yeah. You, would, you know, watch things online, they make up their own preconceived notes. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, even if it's like 18 months, it's like, Seeming to be too perfect to get it all together, and all you're doing is pontificating about like, all your success and how you can help people. Even if it is true, the wow, it just kind of weighs on people. It's like, does he do it? Does he, does he bad at anything? You just want to see if he's a human. So when you post some of that stuff, you know, when people know other things about you, you got kids, you got a car, yeah, it adds to that trust. You just see him like, correct, see the full picture. It's not like something I do. We may put a couple of those out a year, but. I don't know. People still do business with people they like. It's li not just trust. It's like, yeah. and I and I know that might have shifted, but you know, you're more always gonna be more favorable to do business with somebody who's likable. Not hopefully, that I try to be. <laughs> okay, we're about to launch video. What's your, uh... What'd you say? You wanna watch it? We wanna watch the launch? <laughs> yeah, two and a half seconds. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. In sixty. Uh, yes. <laughs> Onboarding process for for new agents. Yeah. The free lead program. Um... Yeah. Okay. So, so um, the launch, the launch, onboarding. I'm thinking about the car. Okay. Onboarding. Two weeks. Um, they come in. They get contracted. They have to buy ten states to start with. We require that from them because we need to have them some skin in the game. And plus, when you're marketing on Facebook, you can't just do one state and have an affordable cost for lead. So that shows us somebody's serious. And then from there, they're going to rehearse the script. They're going to watch objection rebuttal training videos, attend live training calls, and basically just reinforce the training. And we want them on the phone in the next, within two weeks of starting onboarding because it takes about that long anyway for carriers to get appointed. What, we, what you don't want to do, guys, if you're recruiting is have somebody sit around for four or six weeks patiently waiting. They're going to lose momentum. They're going to be attracted by another shiny object. And then they're not going to be all in like they should be. What kind of carriers do you guys contract with? Do you have like three or four? Or yeah, we do, we, do, we do the non-MLM ones, so like SBLI, Trinity Family Benefit, um, SICA, but they're not contracting right now, AIG. Um, you can get two writing numbers with them, stuff like that, because we get a lot of people that come from other ones. And they're like, oh, yeah, this, this sounds cool. So this carrier lineup is good because most of our agents are telesales now. And um, uh, most of them don't have these already, so it's easier to transition. Back to that ad you said you were doing for your agents on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Do you have to put on there this is a paid, paid person or anything? Or? I don't know what they do. I'm sure. I hope. I don't know. I was just curious. It's a paid actor. It's not real. Can you talk about like you, you, you created once, but 
what it does over time, how it, how the momentum and it compounds, like all the assets that you have, that you, your YouTube as a whole, how it contributes to your recruiting. I mean, it is. It's, uh, and how do you mean? Could you clarify? It's compounding, like the, like from all the content that you put in over the years, a video that you probably forgot about that you don't even remember what you said, and it can still lend you a recruit. I it's always work. I mean, so part of this was, and this is why I did daily content early on. I was like, man, like every video is bait. I'm putting out bait to catch me some agents, right? But if I put out seven instead of two a week. Inside of 50 weeks, 52 weeks, I'll have 365 pieces of bait out. If I do that for three or four years, next to the guy is doing two, in a way, I'm going to be way ahead of them possibly, right? So I think a cumulative long term, and that's why this game is a long-term one, because it takes time to get good. Most people aren't going to put the time in. And second of all, it's cumulative. And the outcome of that is, who knows? I mean, there's tons of videos that I've forgotten about that are hooking agents and getting them into my, my funnel. So I know that that's quite the answer you wanted, but something like that, yeah. yeah. Beck? Um, I'm, I'm intrigued about your free lead program. So, sure. Um, you, you have to give me exact numbers, but obviously you have comp levels. What does your free agent lead program comp usually start at? 50. Okay. And do you have those people still take a nine month advance? Yeah. Is there, a, have you ever considered like lowering their, that, maybe raising it up a little bit with taking the back end away so you don't expose yourself to any of that debt? I mean, uh, we ha our, our agents are not on LOA. They're not a line of authority. So they're vested. So they're on the hook anyway. But if they don't pay, it rolls to you, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, it would anyway if they're LOA because I'm the one getting yeah, the charge ready. Good. I'm just, I, that's, that's something about the life insurance industry that's always been so interesting as I talk to more and more people. You know, we keep these advances, which is just like uh, a lot of folks come in, they sell really well for about the two and now they're rich, right? And in reality, yeah. it's just borrowed money. Um, so the quicker you can help people understand that they don't need to be on a nine month advance, maybe they can live off of six or three or. You know, I, I agree with that, but I've never actually seen it done in some sort of constructive, scaled way. Most people stay on in advance. I mean, I've never seen anybody dial. I'm sure there's few out there, but over the years of talking to agents, I don't know anybody who's like, I'm, I've been doing the final expense for five years, and I'm as earned. Like, I know it's a smart idea. It's risk mitigation. Smart for the upline because you've got to co-sign the debt, right? But it's, it just doesn't happen. I just have never seen it happen. What do you film with? Something like this. Um, this is a Sony. Uh, ours is a Sony A6400. It's about a thousand bucks. Um, Mike, this thing right here is what I have. It's a Rode Wireless Go 2. Um, that's it. I don't want to start off with a thousand dollar camera. <laughs> Just phone. <laughs> you could do. You could do your iPhone. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I do a lot of. Yeah, either way. Yeah. It's about a thousand dollar camera. Yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. So, how would you set up the YouTube channel if you wanted to focus on generating organic leads in the niche? I'll show you my other one. How about that? Are you in school now? Yeah. I'll show you my school site. I was going to talk about that. What is it called? Fixed Income Help. You use money for harm, Muffy. Yeah, for real. Were you on it? Before? I was on it before he was. Yeah, 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 I had heard about it before. I'm a first adopter. Okay, so this, this is the site, I, or this is the page I have like more or less neglected. What do we see here that was the same as last time? Competitors. Who am I talking about? Ben, Colonial yeah. Globe, popular name. Look how many views those got. I mean, that's pretty good for that. Yeah, that's really good for that. So, so, and then there were some attempts like reaction to Judge Judy. Now, I didn't do really good on the thumbnails, admittedly. You know, I could probably work on that. But principally, we're seeing the same thing here, like reactions. And the, we, again, we get some leads here, and they're pretty good. There are not a lot of them. And for me, in the YouTube space, what I have found is for final expense, I, I, there's not an active, I don't believe there is an active group of people that are searching for final expense. But Lord knows when you put in here uh, Plan F Medicare, good Lord, here it comes. You know, 
like tons of people are looking for Medicare. So there's some niches I just think perform better than others. You know, like Christopher Westfall was one of the first adopters of YouTube, and he sold out for eight figures recently. So it's so part of it's just dependent. So you might ha you might find like I've often thought this with final expense. You may have to go a niche or, or a level above. Like maybe you're talking about senior finances, but then you got to speak really broadly, but then funnel them into final expense. It's, uh, it's almost the same. It's talking about hey, this is about insurance sales, but then now we're funneling them into final expense. Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're we're looking for Medicare clients in our space. So the hot topic we talk about is. Security yeah. Security strategies. Yeah. And that will get you clicks. Yeah. Now, but Medicare, see, so, so YouTube is like Google. You go to Google to ask questions or because you have a question, you have a problem. YouTube the same way. So there's plenty of space for Medicare. You just, again, with Medicare being more competitive, as you saw there, you have to have a niche even within Medicare. There's just so many eligibles, though, to finish. Just... Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure. About, so... And Cody did this at the last mastermind that I attended, and because and he's like, just just mimic what somebody does, or put correct, it, whatever. I'm stupid to this, so how do you not get in trouble for that? Like, how do how do I, how's it not? So I, I, don't use it, I don't plagiarism isn't the right oh. word, but like, how do you not get like? How do you not get someone to send you like, we're coming after you for? You can go to jail. But it's fine, I'll let you out. I mean, after how long? <laughs> it's just jail. Jeez. What's wrong with you? Aren't you serious about your business? How do you not, how do they not come after you? Well, I mean, I don't think there's any intellectual copyrights to ideas, like, like a concept. Plus, you iterate it in your own way. I mean... He's not doing defamation stuff against him. He's just giving facts. Yeah. Or is that what you're... Yeah, we're, well, I don't know. Like, so are you talking about like the, the criticisms? That, I'm assuming that maybe you're having a conversation with an agent that's coming from an IMO or wherever, and then you use some of that information in the video that you're talking about, and you're not directly saying that, you know, from a, this is what's happening. Are you talking about the review videos? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, like with those, I don't, I don't say XYZ company is a scam and their owner is a, a, is a nutcase psycho. Then he, he could be. He could be, because then I would get a cease and desist. But in this case, I keep it level. I, I, it, I think the way I do it, number one, it's, I tell them very generic stuff, like read your contract. Talk to a couple of agents before you join. I mean, this stuff is good information to someone who has no clue. Everybody here is like, that's no shit. Everybody does. That's, yeah, we're all agents. But to the new guy, they're like, man, I never thought about talking to a couple of agents that, oh, this guy's a salesperson that runs this MLM. I, man, it's an MLM? So, so we got to remember your audience. The audience is different. So when I'm critiquing these videos, you can watch them. They all sound very similar. It's like David didn't say anything like that's going to get him in jail or, or a defamation lawsuit. Now, there are some companies that practice lawfare that I won't mention, that I won't review. And uh, <laughs> even if you do mention them and it's totally above board, they'll cease and desist you. But I'll let you guys so, fill in the gaps. We know who that one of them called me about you one time, too. I think I told you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah? When was that? Yeah. It was, a, it was a, you used, like, a hashtag or something. They're like, I'm suing. That's, I'm like, that's, what he, that's what he sued me for. Yeah. Or a hashtag. A hashtag and a LinkedIn post. They called me. I'm like, dude, Dave's, he's pretty chill. No, <laughs> I, I took it down. All right. So I, I actually appreciate your uh, terminology right now uh, with the whole MLM thing. What makes the, the foreign agency different than the MLM thing that you you know, it's interesting. I, I've, I've talked to, there's a guy in our, well, he's not in our space, but he talks a lot about WFG and Primerica. His, his, his YouTube is always Marco. And, um, you know, they have... Isn't that, but isn't that, that's all that thing. Isn't that just a picture of Greg Birch? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. That may be somebody different. This is a, this is a different one. But my point is, is that, what makes an MLM an MLM? I, it's, it, we could argue that. I think it's the culture issue. Like, what do they really value? If a company values teaching its agents to the craft of selling and creating a skill set to make money from selling, I don't think that's an MLM. When you get into the MLM territory is when it's all about recruiting people to recruit to recruit. And the emphasis is on that as opposed to selling. Or another big thing, I, 
Uh, yes. And, that, and, and monetize, not selling leads, but making a killing off of them because they acquire them for pennies and then sell them for 10 or $11. They're, they're exclusive to each one of us when we buy them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. I've okay. got the same name. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. We don't do any of that, so I think that's why we're different. So really, yeah, I mean, most people are going to think about it, right, is the infrastructure and pyramid scheme that they're and it's, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I don't think they're a pyramid scheme. I just think what they do is scams. I'm going to say, like, most people, yeah. they don't know what they're getting themselves into. Correct, when yeah. You, when you work a hierarchy, right, uh, that's, what they, that's what you see. But when you really talk about that, well, that part is, and I couldn't, I mean, that's perfect, right? When you're, that's why when you're doing a free lead program, I'm like, okay, so then people buy leads from you, right? They, they could. Or do you send them to the company directly that you work with? Well, so in the free lead program, we generate the leads for the agents, right, at, at no cost. We do have allow agents to be brokers buying their own leads, and um, they pay a monthly management fee, and then we generate the leads at cost. There's no markup. So we're not making money on the leads. Like, I'm, I hold the line pretty tight on that. Like, I don't want to – I only want to make money when the agent makes money, so right? You don't make money on the actual lead. I don't. Just no, we lose money. So you still got to pay for the leads, right? Correct. So your override. All What's their management? 500 bucks. Monthly? Mm-hmm. At cost. So, so we don't mark up the leads generated. So if they get a $5 lead, they pay that, whatever the price is. Again, I, I think from a cultural standpoint, like, I only want to win when the agent wins. I feel like if I'm doing like that company does that charges an, uh, out the wazoo price for a garbage lead, I think that does a disservice. It make, tarnishes our industry. And so Cody's going to have to change all his swag to 4%. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're actually calling Matt Cody money right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, but they are. No, I don't have a problem with Cody selling leads and making money. That's a different operation, you know. So, What's the difference between the free leads and the paid leads? Nothing. Well, we may go a little bit. We have a, a broader range of creatives that we use on the free leads. Um, but it's, it's essentially the same program. What's your attrition rate as far as ages go? I mean, what's the average yeah. you see so, come in the, and stay and what have you? We track, we've been tracking the, when we started the free lead program, this started in September um, of last year. We started tracking attrition. It's a little bit closer because it's hard. Some t- some agents still just sell a policy a month. Like, what do you could you define attrition as? Well, that guy's failed out. I don't know, but we we definitely track it within the free lead program. And at the end of February, from the time we started to the end of February this year, seventy two percent of those agents that had begun writing business are still with us. Not the people who joined and chickened out or decided it wasn't for them, but the people who actually got on the phone and sold or attempted to sell. Seventy two percent. That number is going to go down. But my take on it is, you know, if, if 8% fail out or, or 92% fail out, but only, you know, 40% fail, that's a huge, that's a much better improvement. What's Big the time. Average age? The average age? Hmm. I have no, you know, it probably skews younger, you know, um, in the free lead program, probably. Our, our top guys, Marcus, Nick, and Jay are probably in their 20s. But we have a, I, David, he's writing 30,000. He's in his 60s. You know, so, I mean, it's all over the place. So the free leads versus paid, or what's their commission structure again? So we, we put agents at a 50% commission for the primary carriers for free leads. And then for, for agents buying their own leads, they're at 100% to start. But that can go up higher based off of production. And we do allow them to recruit at some point, but I, again, if you've watched my content long enough, you know I don't want anybody recruiting who's brand new. It's, it's, you're underwriting their advances, so if they don't pay back their chargebacks, you as a recruiter are responsible for them. And um, it's a distraction from learning how to sell effectively. So I, I, I'm a crawl before you walk type of guy when it comes to recruiting, personally. So what, 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 so your top guys, like you said, it's four people. What kind of level will you ultimately get them at, too? I mean, are they going to get at a 120, a 130 level? I mean, what, what, what is it? Our top agents are free lead agents. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. My dad sold his chemical business to Ecolab. My, my uh, uncle in part started XM Radio. My grandfather ran a HVAC company. I'm born 
to be an entrepreneur, right? And so I used to make content like, I can't believe you guys are on a 50% contract. Y'all are getting ripped off. You should get a 100% contract or 120 or whatever the number is. Just do the math, do the math on paper. But what I've realized since I started the program is there's this psychological trauma called buying leads that 90% of agents suffer through, and it messes with their mindset of how to be successful. And when we took away the responsibility, and I believe a burden, of buying leads, we created a whole new market of agents to be successful without having to worry, I've got to put $1,000 more on my credit card. And and I could tell them until I'm blue in the face, but I, I am different. Most agents... If they get to that point, they need time to establish themselves and build confidence. But what I found is our agents in our free lead program are less stressed out. And this is a performance-based activity. It's, we're making references to basketball. Like, if your mind's not right and money problems stress people out, it's going to affect your performance. And so it's, it's totally changed the culture, the nature, and, and the amount of people successful. What, what's your distribution uh, like for the free lead program? Come in, what do you get a day, a week, a month? Distribution? Like, how, do you, how many leads can I get? How, many, how, how do you do it all? A couple, uh, so our top guys are getting, we, we have presets for a couple of our guys. Our top guys are getting 80 to 100 presets a week. Um, that's how we reward our, with merit. We play favorites, guys. Yeah, like preset? Preset appointments, yeah. 80 to 100 a week. We reward the guys who crush it, and we want to keep them around, and we give them special privileges like preset appointments. And all they do is show up and sell. Now, they'll make some outbound calls. Um, but, yeah, our top guys are getting up to 200 leads a week. Some people, they get, they get to like 100 or 150, and they stop producing like it's too much. So it just depends on the individual, right? They may be better at 80 to 100. But we want to stack up our winners and let them ride because the big thing in this business is, look, if I can increase the uh, uh, retention rate from 8% to 40, compound that over a couple of years, man, they're successful. I'm really successful. We're making a lot of money together, right? So, so we want to favor those people and just keep them as busy as possible. When do you, when do you cut someone off free leads? When they don't. So, oh, good. Yeah. yeah, I mean. So there's a couple of stages. Number one, we bring them on. They have to make a sale in their first week. We give them fresh leads and age leads. You should be making sales in final expense. It's not that complicated. Right? And if you actually studied the find of those first two weeks in the onboarding process, you should be making sales. If you don't, we're probably just going to cut you. The second stage is what, what if you have somebody who's productive, but their CPA is high? So we may have somebody who's writing good volume for them, but for the business, it doesn't cash flow enough for us. Right? So we need more out mileage out of them with the amount of leads that we get. So we work with them on improving their skill sets. And um, sometimes we let the middle of the road guys go. But the goal is to build up a guy from $10,000, 20000 a month to forty to 50000 right? And then there's a lot of our top guys that started at 10, 25, 30, 50, and have scaled up as their skill sets have developed. And they're in your free lead program. You do a 40 to 50 camp. Dude, yeah. I'm telling you, man. It's, yeah. And they're, in they're happy. Levels. They're happy. And you're loving life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. I, I never imagined the free lead program would ever, I would ever like it. Because I, I would talk crap about it for years. A joining fee or a monthly fee or anything else? No. I just, and, and, and no. that model won't Man. be affected with, with the whole July stuff. Like, you're, you're being, you'll still able to distribute those leads to your downlines and then reach out. Oh, the FCC one, thing? Yeah, one, one. yeah, we talked to an uh, expensive lawyer for an hour yesterday and. They don't really know. They're like, well, this is what we think is going to happen, and, but it's, not, it's too early. It is too early. There's still some rulings coming out, so I, we're kind of gearing up for it. I think it will be fine because our strategy is in the ad itself, it's going to say the dig agency, and then when the agent's on the phone, on the script, they're going to say the dig agency. So that's, that's, that's exactly that. Yeah. That's how you say it's fine. That's just fine. Huh? Yeah, so... So that's, I think, despite them being 1099s, that's the way that we're going to be safe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. What, um, for the free, free leads, um, what kind of software do you guys have? Yeah. Using or downloading from? Yeah, yeah. Um, guys, I will tell you right now, I highly recommend Kixi. Anybody use Kixi here? Yeah. Kixi is awesome. The reason I like it, now I've heard some complaints from it, but the reason we, and it's not perfect, but Kixi is great because 
the biggest problem in this business is not the no's, it's the maybes, it's people who pick up the phone, yeah. right? And so what Kixi does is it shows a local number to the client you're calling, it's, and it's not spoofed, so it's not illegal, it's legal. They own the number, Kixi does. So that helps encourage pickups because it's a local number. And then the other thing that Kixi does actively is it scrubs the numbers against the spam likely and telemarketer likely filters. That's what's killing us, okay? And so we got like a 200 to 300% increase in pickups just by using Kixi. Guys, that's money, all right? That's huge. Yeah, I, and, I used them and nobody else had ever told me about them. Yeah. With all these other companies, right, phone burner, or what's the other one, call tools, you have to buy each number for each state, so they're just, they're punishing you. Yeah. They're two dollars a pop. Yeah. Here, it's, the only downside is one downside case. You cannot pay monthly, you pay quarterly, and if you cancel one month in, thank you for your donation. But you yep. cannot commit to three months. That, that is, I was looking for the biggest downfall, and I was like, where is it? Oh, and the other one, and maybe I can talk to Alex, is the integration component. They do integrate to yeah. high level, and they do communicate, but it doesn't... Well, it's not perfect. It's yeah. not perfect. Yeah. So, it's, it's worth just, fooling with because it's that good. They're just looking... They are literally just have an open API key, so they're moving it over, right? But it's yeah. Not, it's, it tells me the notes. It tells me enough, but it, I'm glad you brought Casey because nobody talks about them as much, and I think they're actually great. Yeah. The, it's, it is great. a must-have. Every single one of our free lead agents gets it for free. We pay the bill. Pay wow. I pay for it because wow. it makes me money. It's expensive. And um, our brokers can get it. It's just 150 bucks. That's not that bad. It's 150 bucks. It's worth every penny. You should get it if you're buying your own leads for free. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, yeah. It, it's really it's good. It's just their integration with. GHL. It's much to be desired. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to still load the leads on every month. Yeah. What about the self booked appointments? The what? The self booked. For the age oh, doing well, like, I mean, we on I, I have to talk to Tim, but I believe it happens at the time of like probably like most of you guys do. You get it at the time of the lead acquisition, and there's an option to schedule an appointment. Mm -hmm. But we send all presets to, we call it our A team. <clears throat> so the A team gets all the preset appointments. None of the other agents do, because and again, it may sound mean, but our, our top guys, we want to take care of those people. Because probably the top five are responsible for 50% of our production, right? And if you take care of your, your very best, they ain't going anywhere, right? Because they're the ones that are the drivers of your profitability and revenue. So we funnel those to them. You know, I love that you actually openly admit that. Because I am a firm believer that there are people at every organization that get uh, preferential treatment like that. There is. I, I know there is. And I, yeah, I've heard. So, uh, um, we had people pissed too. I mean, we had people angry about well, it. But how does this person do this every year, every month, or whatever, yeah. right? And for a while, there, I don't know if you remember. Uh, and I can say because I worked with that. That came out with a thing they called. Did you guys ever see that? And it got deleted in like seconds. Uh, it was literally anybody that like had a policy with them that lapsed within a little bit, or their agent was gone, and your role was like to call them. So they have access to all these other sources. That, you know, Let's remove that from the video. <laughs> People definitely remember that. Yeah. Hopefully we can't hear his audio. He's <laughs> <laughs> not. He's a bit <laughs> Well, it's, it's like running like a sports team. Yeah. Yo, you know, you know, you know, the ball we got to score. The ball got a pass that travels with him. Like, let's, let's just be yeah. real. Like, you should get it. Well, you know, the other thing, too, we want, we're an outbound call team. We're not a sit on your butt, wait for the TV leads to come in. Like, as soon as TV leads, it, it cultivates a bad a culture. Yeah. I want, I really am passionate about this. I want to teach agents to, if you can learn how to pick up the phone and make money at any time, you're never going to go hungry. And, and you cultivate a hardcore group of people when they can do that again and again and again. And that's our average agent. I mean, they're picking up the phone, they're dialing Mildred, and they're getting a sale. I want a core group of people. I want all my people like that. I don't want them entitled to a, an inbound and then mad when they don't get enough, you know, and there's a lot of problems with that. Go ahead. So you're calling Mildred on the phone, and are you closing her right then, or are you setting up another appointment? Closer. Closer right now. You don't get, you don't get one shot. One shot. No oh, Zoom, nice. just phone. Just a phone. That's all you need. And that pre, those preset appointments, 
is that generated from your high level flows or do you yes. have, solely or do you have a stat person sometimes taking a lead in a command, whatever, is, is anybody on your team? No, it's pretty much, it's, it's automation to some extent. And it's also at the time of the acquisition of the lead on the face. I think the Facebook form, there's an offer to set a calendar appointment. Appointment setters are pretty much archaic and they're, they're going. They're, yeah, not, not in telesales. They don't exist. Correct. Yeah. How many people are you, 18? Three. So 196 of his people, right? No, no, no. Free lead, free lead, the free lead division has about, right now, 30 to, 30 to 40 people selling. Hmm. So 10%. Uh, so, okay, so. Yeah. Well, so those 30 to 40 people, 10% of those are on your AT. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, well, but you got to think he also has, because they're some of the most profitable people, right? Right. No, it's right. Well, they're the biggest sellers. <laughs> you have to kind of look at it, right? Because they are the biggest IP sellers, but are they actually your most, like, making the most, you know what I'm saying? If I'm making 100% on one sale, you see what I'm saying? Like, I may only write 30. Their close rates are north of 10% of the leads distributed to them. But, but it doesn't matter because people are happy because the ones that are doing more volume are made with less energy lead, lead generation on their own self are making almost as much money as the people that are getting a higher margin but have to generate their own leads. So this whole culture is happy. Yeah, and, and, and about that, most agents... It's personalities. Most agents really shouldn't be generating their own leads. Maybe about 10%. You guys might be the 10%, but my, I have found most agents can't get past. Um, they can't, it's, Dan Kennedy used to say this. Most of the courses and stuff, you, you got to be okay with this as, as a person selling anything. you got to be okay with most of your people not even taking the saran wrap off the course. That's not your fault. That's their fault. right? And, and it's just, God bless you people who sell courses to train agents how to do Facebook marketing. It's... No, thank you. <laughs> Just buy them. Go back to the for free. That the appointment setter is, is on the way out. If you're, if you're doing face-to-face, -face, it's completely valid. But for the phone, why would you appointment set when they call? Just close them. The only option for a pre-set a pre appointment at the time of the lead generated on Facebook would be valid. Are all these people remote? All of them. No call center. Are they, is there a virtual Zoom environment or no? We do everything on Slack. You know, I, I've been a little antsy about Zoom. I've always thought it was a HIPAA issue. I don't mean with clients. I mean with each other. Yeah, in-house. Like, yeah, I hear what you're saying. We, yeah, so we do some, we call them virtual ride-alongs. So our, our top producers will share their desktops on Zoom, and they'll let the agents observe. They won't talk to the agent because he's out there cr closing and crushing it. We're not getting in his way. But they can watch. They can see. So we've recorded some trainings like that, which is absolutely incredibly valuable but i was going to comment there are some agencies that do zoom calls yeah. but then they share the client information like i i'm at a point in my life where i have something to lose and for me it's like what if somebody's on there recording that and i don't know about it and they're they're taking social security numbers or taking personal information bank accounts i've been defrauded by agents in this business so i know everything's possible and um you know you just can't so we we don't do zoom calls at all, where it's like a live dial session, listen to me close, that kind of thing. It's just too risky. There's a lot of that to do. Yeah, there's a ton of that. And I don't know, I don't understand how these carriers aren't coming out and aren't, I guess nobody has sued them yet, because that's how the TCPA stuff happened mm -hmm. with the telemarketed leads. I think these carriers had to get sued for whatever before they started saying no more telemarketed leads. So you have all these remote people dialing, but you have a core office with staff. My spare bedroom and house. Okay. Yeah. I, I, no, I mean, we're all remote. So uh, my, my guy in Indiana, he's my, Tim Hildebrand, my telesales trainer. He's in his spare bedroom. You know, I'm in mine. He's in his. No, we don't have an office. Never have. But you do have very nice bookcases. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That came with the home. I didn't put that in there. I'm too cheap for that. I was blessed to have that. So perfect. I thought you were teaching us uh, YouTube, David. You gave us a whole new business model. <laughs> I did? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm teaching that, too. I, I, I'll talk about anything. I was curious. I noticed your YouTube channel is the name of your business. Do you think it's better to have your YouTube channel as your business name or your personal name? Yeah, so um, 
That's a great question. I mean, I've, I've gone back and forth on that. But the re- my YouTube facilitates my real business, which is this, the big agency. So for me, I want my YouTube channel to reflect that. And the other part of it is if I get to the point of selling one day, the YouTube part is incredibly valuable because it is, it is a unique asset that very few others have. And I want the brand to be associated with the business, not me personally, as much as possible. So for me, I agree. I think it's better in some cases to have your name on it. But where I'm going at some point, possibly. And so I want to make sure that the channel reflects the brand of the company. Not after today. <laughs> My release just reset. <laughs> what release? Another six months. What release? <laughs> what release? Another six months. <laughs> Sir? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Please get us back on track. <laughs> okay. Okay. Questions? Anything else? Yes. Earlier you had mentioned not doing any one-to-ones and then making them all group. Yeah. Like, how did you shift from the one-to-ones to that? Or did you ever do one-to-ones? I mean, Cody, you do enough of them, right? You just get pissed off because they're asking all the same questions over here, right? Yeah, they suck. <laughs> Thank you for taking the heat of that. No, so in, in all seriousness, first of all, you know, all businesses have to have, if you're running your own business, you're going to reach an inventory, right? Or a maximum a capacity. You'll have a capacity issue where you cannot do more one-on-ones. And then you realize once you do one-on-ones enough that well, about 80% of the questions are the same, right? So that's why we have now the live Q&A because now I can just handle everybody's questions, which are 80% of the time the same. They really aren't that unique. And then I can address them in a much more cost sensitive way where it may take me that like we have we had 20 people on a q a wednesday that might might have took me 10 hours well, i did that in 30 minutes 35 minutes right and the and the outcome was basically the same and again my assets the youtube the 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 branding people who come into that already know what's going on so for me that's why we do it and i just there's very rarely a reason to now i won't say i'll, I'll never won't do a one-on-one but 99% of the time, it's unnecessary. Um, so why not just uh, pre-record you know, the 80% most common FAQs into a video um, and have that up on the part of the onboarding funnel instead That's of actually right. doing it? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. But make sure it's AI. <laughs> so, so this video right here, this is, that, this is that, and then guess what we got below here? Even more FAQ videos. Like These are the common questions that... I, People could have it oh, in front of them, no, and they've told you they watched it, and then when they go to a live one, they're going to ask you the exact same question. They, they don't watch it. Yeah, yeah. It's going back. Yeah. 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 It'll come up. So if you, if you got, and eventually, hopefully, we'll show here, but um, on my website, there's a main opportunity overview video. There it is. And then below that, these are like sub FAQ, like these are like more specific questions, like uh, what the licensing requirements are why everybody, most everybody should be on a free lead program. These are the questions that would come up time to time, and I just, you know, put it in video format so we can just not answer these questions again and again. Mm-hmm. And, and now what I will do, because somebody mentioned, like, yeah, you put up a video and they won't watch that crap anyway. That's true. So, you know, we, we try to nag our, our potential agents to death. Like, for example, um, it's not listed here, but when they join on a Q&A call, which usually shows up here, we send them a Calendly link, and then in that Calendly reminder sequence, it's like, do not come to this until you watch this vi- these videos. Again, do not come up or come to this until you watch these videos first. And we remind them of that. Now, it's not foolproof, but it really does help get everybody up to the minimal level of education about what we do so we can spend those 30 minutes just with little tiny questions that aren't that important. But... Are you basket. putting a link in your Calendly reminder to your YouTube to go back to? Uh, no, I just I tell them to go back to the homepage and then to go look at these videos below here. So we just funnel them back. Are those videos hosted from your YouTube channel? Uh, no. Um, if you do, I mean, you, there's no reason. Well, you can do that, but what will happen is you'll get recommended from others in there. 
so they might see Cody's channel and then get distracted. Oh, we don't want that. So. <laughs> kaboom! Kaboom! Right here! Kaboom! Yeah, kaboom! <laughs> these, these are all uh, Vimeo and uh, or Loom. Yeah. This does happen a lot, like a lot of cross pollination. Yeah. That's, that's sure. how my channel grew. They found him, and then they slowly started finding me. Right. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask, I mean, so if I want to start doing uh, YouTube for my niche, which is veterans, uh, how do they, how are they going to find me? Mm. You, YouTube will put your content in front of people. Okay. If you have good, compelling content that's interesting. I have a... Words, it transcribes the videos, search, all of them. So I had an agent on the ACA side. We don't recruit for that anymore. But he retired from Social Security Administration. And Ed Weir is his name. He created a YouTube channel just talking about social security concepts, and he was very good at it because that was his thing. And he, I don't know where he's at now, but he was at 10,000 subs before AAP last year. You know, so, and that was in a short period of time. So he knew his niche. And so if you know your niche and you, you can talk about it, great. And then the other strategies would be to, to do like, like, I like when Cody comes on my channel and I like when I'm on his because there's cross-pollination. And YouTube sees that and says, oh, maybe this guy, like, you know, if you watch like a, I don't know, Lex Friedman and Jordan Peterson, you're probably going to get content for both of those because YouTube's thinking, oh, you must enjoy one or the other. Let's serve up some other stuff that's similar. So you, that's always a good thing to do, too, with YouTube people. This right here, I'll share this with you. This, this is a school site. This is Sam Oven's site. I got onto this like about a year, year and a half ago. And so this is, this is a, I guess, a pre-funnel, I guess. So I, I don't know if you notice this, but when we go to my site and if they click off or they, they go somewhere else, they're going to be prompted to basically join this school site. And what this school site does is it houses all of my training for free. You guys can join it if you want. It's daviddeford.com forward slash ISS. And the idea behind here is to intentionally build a relationship further with the agents and get their contact information. Um, by the way, if you're going to do any kind of social media marketing, please, please, please collect their emails at least. Because the, sometimes you won't sell them up front, but you will over time. And, uh, and your YouTube account can be shut down at any time. It could be canceled, right? I mean, people complain about this stuff. So you want to get their contact information so you can follow up with them over and over again. Uh, but this stuff is just designed to build more value with my potential prospects <laughs> who are going to join. And again, when they're watching our deep dive sales courses, et cetera, like, dang, this guy knows, I hope this is what they think. They, he knows what he's talking about. I think I'd like to join. So that's the idea here, idea there. When Evan McGuffin introduced me. Yeah. So Evan and I, Richard, Evan and I, Evan introduced me to about... <laughs> Okay. I want to go to one meeting with, I'm like, okay, great. I was like, okay. He goes, check his stuff out. So I went to your website. I did click off on it. It did transfer me over. This was like two years ago. It did transfer me over to sales school. And I was like, huh, I'm not subscribing to anything here. I don't do anything here. I'm just going to play with this. Why not? I'm going to check out what his videos are. I'm yeah. going to check out his yeah. content. Yeah. The content's fantastic. Thank you. I've never unsubscribed from it. I still get your emails. Still two years to this day. All that spam and you're having unsubscribe. Thank you. I save it all. I save it all. But, but like, I get it though because there's so much content there. Those agents that that are that are look that aren't already established or whatever, they're gonna join your agency just because of the persistency of what you're doing. Right. It's fantastic. Right. right. Yeah, I've been doing this long enough that it's the long game you guys want to play with anything, including if you if you want to do a consumer based strategy. Like, you just have to be in front of people and just deliver value. You never know. I have people who are like, man, I've been watching your stuff for years. I'm ready to start. It's, it's cool. You know, but you wouldn't know it because you don't talk to these people until they're right about to start. You know? A couple other things I'll share with you. Um, just kind of, uh, Loom. Y'all use Loom? Yeah. Highly recommend you use Loom. Uh, it's, uh, I do it for all my emails now. Instead of typing it out, I send the videos. I think it's the equivalent of the handwritten letter. Like when you get a personal video from somebody, they, it feels way more impactful and special to them. That's my, that's what I do. I always. Say. It's my jam, man. That's right. You know, everybody send you a text. They might post something on social media. They might like something. Yeah. When you get a video picture from somebody, it's just different, right? Okay. So what was William, it short? Pretty sure I sent one to to Cody back yeah. in the day. I think I sent one to do for it too. Yep, I think so.
Questions? Very good. Is that it? Yeah. I can keep going. All right. Thank you.